Well, I think it all started when uh, I was chatting with uh, my good friend Tara McLean about reconciliation and uh, what we could do in terms of our part about promoting reconciliation um, with our Indigenous peoples and the rest of the people in Canada for that matter. I reached out to Chief Francis uh, a few years ago actually when I was writing a show about how music came to the east coast of Canada and it occurred to me that music has actually always been here. He was so generous and uh, helped me to make it a culturally sensitive script and, uh, and we became good friends. He came to my show one day and uh, gave me this beautiful blessing of an eagle feather, which is a very high honor of friendship for the Mi'kmaq people to give. And I was so touched and I took that very seriously, the idea that I am now a friend and I wanted to understand how I could be a better friend, what that meant. For me, this all kind of started when uh, Tara started connecting with Chief Francis. And, and so, yeah, we went on a tour of the Scotch Fort Reserve. It was really nice to get a first-hand look into something that I feel like we should all just know more about because it's such a big part of our island history. We talked about uh, doing a song in Mi'kmaq and I had mentioned to Tara that uh, my wife taught the children in Mount Stewart. I decided to start teaching the children Mi'kmaq songs for special occasions like Remembrance Day, Christmas, as you know, we lost our language with the residential schools and things like that, but this is one way to have children uh, become interested in it and to try and uh, get it back. I wanted to do something special to bring in the language and to have the children learn First Nation and non-First Nation. I guess we started talking about how Georgina was teaching the kids these songs in Mi'kmaq. I don't know, just thought, well, we should record that. That would be a beautiful thing. At first, they were kind of scared and one of the students told me how are we ever going to learn this song and I said anything is possible when you work together I guess uh, when, when we look back in history, Canada has not been kind at all to not only our Mi'kmaq people, but all Indigenous people across the country. I kind of bridged the gap with teaching our language and our culture to the students and to the teachers as well. One of the things that we're talking a lot about is the truth, like really hearing the truth. And the truth is going to hurt it's gonna hurt everyone when it, as it's coming out. And I think we all need to be really brave and, and feel it and accept it in order to, um, to really understand what it's gonna to take uh, to heal this. I think that we're just at the beginning of a major shift and hopefully one that is shifting towards um, inclusiveness, acceptance, a real uh, honest look at our history and not kind of covering over the things that we're ashamed of. I think in order for us to move forward as a country, as a people, as a province, as a community, we need to look closer at what has happened before so that we can, um, yeah, move together, fo forward together. We have a long ways to go uh, in terms of true reconciliation, meaningful reconciliation, uh, but the important thing is that we keep moving forward with it and that we don't stop. 
Well, people that aren't my culture, I and singing the song, it makes me feel special because they are getting to learn how my culture speaks and sings. O Canada is a really special, special thing to sing in this situation because um, because it's patriotic and because. We are, we are all part of this country. I was yes. super impressed with you guys when you came to the studio and sang those songs, and today again. Thank you. And um, I, wanted, I wanted to share with you some of my music, so if you would like Ooh. a CD, I have I some. I, oh. I think it really is a connector. You know, it allows people to get together in a way that they wouldn't normally. You know, we can be very serious in our day-to-day -day life, but um, music brings out a bit of joy and fun, and um, I think it just allows us to connect on a maybe a more intimate level, but in a public space that doesn't happen in very many other ways. To me, it was also a way of continuing to create that awareness about our, our uh, distinct cultures and really that we're all one. When you sang O Canada and you brought to your family, what did they say or how did they feel? I think that one of, like my grandma was kind of like crying and I think that my mom kind of felt proud or something because she had a huge smile on her face. When I close my eyes and listen to it, I can't tell who's uh, Aboriginal and who's not Aboriginal. It's all beautiful. My mom came from residential schools. She was so determined to have our language and teach us. The colonialists uh, tried to eradicate this language and she kept it alive in her heart. In every day, seven days a week, we learned, that's all we learned, is Mi'kmaq. As a result, Georgina is now taking that to a whole new level and teaching it to the school, and now we've recorded it, and it's going to go out even further, and it's just that that one mother with that determination has caused this ripple effect. I think that's the only way, is to look back so that we can really move into, a hopefully, a, a better future. As a people, I mean, we've been here for 12,000 years, um, and I don't think uh, that many know who we are. I'm realizing what a giant job uh, reconciliation is, and how if we can each just show up and use what we're good at and, and try and and bridge and connect uh, that that we we just each need to do what we can. Knowing that it could be played like in schools kind of across Canada, it it was just it's kind of overwhelming, um, and I feel kind of proud about it. So.